What's up YouTube, Christo here, and I've got another video for you. Something to kind of weigh out all the talk of niche on my channel recently. Not, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I know there's definitely lots of my subs that want to hear about some designers as well. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and I thought this would be a great time to do it because it's been like all niche on my channel for like two months. Uh, I haven't done much in the designer realm for quite a while, so I thought I would do this. Kind of balance it out so i'm gonna do a five designers i have to have in 10 minutes and it doesn't mean that i have to have them in the next 10 minutes but i'm just gonna list five uh, designer fragrances that i've been testing uh, or know about i don't have but i really need to have them soon enough um, definitely i would say my taste is changing dramatically and i am leaning towards uh, niche as well as exclusive lines. Um, there's very little left in the, in the designer world that still truly interests me or entices me. There are still some things, um, but most of what I do really enjoy, I already have. So these are things that I need to have. Five designers I need to have or must have in 10 minutes. So I've got the clock ready to go. I'm gonna go about 10 minutes for this one, uh, no particular order. It doesn't mean the best one is first or the best one is last. They're just five fragrances that I really uh, enjoy and I need to pick them up. Now I do have some notes here, so forgive me if I am looking back and forth now and again. Uh, so first one, uh, this is actually the first designer fragrance that I tried back in Canada that was a new release that I hadn't got to try yet that I was really, really impressed with. It is Terra d'Hermes's Eau Très Fresh. Um, I've kind of have this really weird love and hate relationship with the original uh, Terra d'Hermes. Uh, I really hated it when I first tried it. And then a couple months later, I revisited it and just fell in love with it and was bananas for it for years. Uh, and then just something about it, the, the ISOE Super really started to bother me. It became more and more apparent how much there was in it. Um, the kind of rotten uh, fermenting oranges or citrus in it really started to bother me as well. And I just totally, totally went off the scent. So actually my first init uh, initial response when I heard about the Autre Fresh was like, oh, Hermes, they're, you know, just getting worse and worse with flankers because they do have a few flankers um, and they had a few before this. And I was just a little bit put off by it. So I never really gave it much attention. Finally, I got to try it in the Hermes Boutique, and I was really impressed with it. It takes out the kind of rotten citrus that really put me off initially uh, and replaces it with like a nice, clean, fresh yellow citrus um, with some kind of watery notes. But there are definitely similarities. I was really impressed with it. I got a sample, and I tried it. I used my full sample up, and I definitely uh, think it is something I need to have, especially with summer coming up so soon it's already getting quite warm so Hermes Terre d'Hermes Autre Fresh uh, definitely a designer I must have next one uh, surprisingly another flanker and actually all of my list are flankers surprisingly because I'm usually not someone who's overly into them I find them kind of gimmicky kind of goofy sometimes but uh, the next one is a quite recent flanker as well uh one of my all-time favorite designer fragrances a fragrance to me that has a long history uh Givenchy's Pie Extreme um I wore this the, for the first time in college probably about 13 years ago and I loved it I thought it was just so different and just unlike anything I'd really ever smelled uh you know in perfume or cologne at that time and I loved it, and I got so many compliments. Um, even after college, a few people I kept in touch with who happened to be girls, one thing they actually mentioned, more than one mention, was I loved the cologne you wore in college so much. And that's what it was. Um, one of them actually remembered the name, even though she hadn't smelled it in like two or three years. Um, the extreme version... I can't say it's overly different. As soon as I smelled it, it instantly reminded me of, you know, Givenchy Pie and the newer formulations as well. It's 
It's called Extreme. Uh, basically, it's just a little bit heavier, a little bit darker. Supposedly, there's leather in it. Um, I don't know. I still find it to be quite similar to the original, but like I said, it is a bit heavier, uh, darker. Um, I hope it lasts longer. I haven't properly been able to test it like fully, fully and thoroughly. Um, I haven't gotten any samples of it, but I really enjoyed it. And my Givenchy pie bottle is long gone. So this would be something really good to replace it with. I do have to say the first time I tried Givenchy pie after college was like 10 years later, uh, just because it's really hard to find in Indonesia. I don't know why, but pie never really made it into the Indonesian market. And that's where I was living. And I finally got a bottle thanks to Daver from the Fragrance Bros shipped over to me. And um, I was just really surprised, like, how watered down and light uh, it was compared to how I remembered it. And, um, yeah, apparently it just has been reformulated, watered down over and over. So maybe the extreme will be just a little bit more than uh, what it's turned into. So give me a bit more of that uh, bite or weight that I like from it. The third designer I must have. Um, and I do actually have a sample of that right here. This is Chanel's Coco Noir. Um, I have had samples of four of these five, but I ended up using them up and that just tells you how much I enjoy them. Uh, this one I just got quite recently and I really enjoy this a lot. Um, I do have to say Coco, the original is good, but I prefer this heavily. Um, it still kind of has that perfumey uh, patchouli and rose combo that goes on that kind of makes it like a classic maybe a more modern classic uh, women's fragrance release like you can totally tell where it came from and it's okay but I think this is great I think this is just a little bit more modern take on it I can't say it's overly dark or noir or black or whatever but um, there's definitely a bit more weight to it um, there's kind of like a creamy uh, cacao or creamy tonk in this that I do quite like, even though that's something I usually try to avoid. Um, there's definitely some, uh, fruity aspects. I believe there's some peach in here, especially kind of in the mid, but I really enjoy this. And I think it is kind of a great contemporary take on maybe, uh, a designer fragrance for women that maybe is a little bit out of date, or maybe is very specifically from a certain time and place but uh yeah i really enjoy this uh it's really great i've almost picked it up a couple times but then just something else has come along and i've grabbed it instead but either way this is definitely a must have for me the fourth one is actually a fragrance i used to own uh but unfortunately it was maybe just a bit too masculine for my taste at the time uh this one is guerlain's vetiver extreme um another flanker uh, and to be honest, I really do not like the original Vetiver uh, from Guerlain. I just find it too pungent, uh, a bit too dated for me. But the Vetiver Extreme, I think, is great. I actually reviewed this probably about four, four and a half years ago on my channel. Um, and it's actually quite a popular review, surprisingly, because I didn't really think there was much of a following out for it. But um, it's probably one of my biggest reviews and uh, in terms of numbers, I mean. And uh, I liked it, but I did kind of say it's not really something I can wear a lot. It's maybe not quite my taste, uh, which was true. Uh, and then recently, I finally got to retry it again. I ended up selling or swapping my bottle. And uh, I ended up trying it again at the Guerlain Boutique. Um, maybe six months ago, I tried it, like, properly tried it on a piece of paper. And then was like, wow, you know what? that's a lot better than I remember it, or maybe more wearable for me and my taste. Sprayed on my skin, really enjoyed it. Um, didn't get a sample, unfortunately, but because I was so familiar with it before, and it did kind of go like, wow, that's definitely what my taste has grown into. Um, uh, the difference to me, I find it to be smokier. I find there to be a lot of citrus that really remains throughout the life of the fragrance. And the thing that I really enjoy about it still, to me, smells like a big dollop of kind of fresh, smoky, earthy shaving cream, which I think is great. And that is totally what my taste has uh, evolved into right now. And the fifth one, 
Another flanker yet again. Uh, this one is another fragrance that's come up on my radar again because it is getting so warm out. Uh, I wasn't actually able to try this in Indonesia. It's been out for quite a long time, but I was never actually able to track it down until I came to Canada. Um, and still, I'm basing this off of the Reform uh, or the modern version, which I haven't heard too much uh, difference between that and the original. The fifth one is Dior Homme's Cologne. Uh, and this is another one that just theoretically I shouldn't like, but I ended up really loving it. Um, it's just like this great balance between the original Dior Homme and Dior Homme Sport. Um, I used to really like Dior Homme Sport, kind of gone off it. I don't think it's terrible, but I just find it a bit boring. So I really like the combination here. Um, it's just so well balanced between the kind of floral makeup-y powdery thing that Dior Homme does mixed with the kind of fresh, uh, sparkling, soapy citrus that you get with the Sport. I think... I don't know if that's initially what it was intended to be, but without a doubt, that's exactly what this reminds me of. Um, it's a pretty good price as well for a designer fragrance. You can get 125 mil bottles of it um, for a pretty good price. It's again, it's something that I'm definitely thinking about now that summer's coming around. Um, I had a sample. I can't really say much about the uh, performance on it, but it's one of those things. It smells so good. It's somewhat affordable. Um, and it comes in a big bottle, so I would have no problem at all uh, just filling up an atomizer and reapplying, especially as well. I'm a real sucker for base notes. Uh, sorry, for opening notes. I, much my detriment often, often, I don't test properly into the base notes like I should. But um, yeah, I'm the kind of person I don't mind uh, if I have to reapply every once in a while to get those great opening notes that I usually quite love. So... There you go. There's my five designer scents I must have in 10 minutes. Uh, let me know what you think of my picks. Let me know what some of your must have designers are that maybe you um, haven't picked up yet, but have tested enough to know that you gotta have them. Um, gonna do something for summer, not quite sure what yet. Uh, I got a few things in mind, but I uh, just wanna work something out. Getting kind of bored and tired of the typical old top 10 lists so just trying to think of something new different innovative and uh you know stick around for that and uh, hopefully see you soon